All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, as always, we want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechakwadash. We would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us his truth. And as always, much peace, love, and salutation to you, let Akim out here pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. Uh, to the 144,000 prophets who the Lord has ordained to teach this word to you all, we say Shalom, as well as to the large multitude which believe, which consists of men, women, and children who the Lord is going to have mercy on. Uh, to you all, we say Shalom as well. And Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah Bashem Rechakwa Dash Thumb to you all. Uh, we're Great Millstone Dallas, and we're just coming back for another uh, Saturday class. And uh, what we wanted to do today through the Spirit is go through uh, part of Hebrews, the ninth chapter. All right, we're not going to go through the whole chapter, but we're going to we're going to go through about uh, I'll say about half about half of it. We're going to stop at verse fourteen. But the main pieces that we wanted to uh, get in this chapter is the uh, the contrast. All right, the contrast between the old and the new covenant. All right, now we had some, you know, some wacky tacky Christian come up yesterday that was, uh, you know, bombarding us with just a lot of confusion, you know, a lot of questions that he couldn't answer that we was asking back to him and he he couldn't answer it, you know. But when it comes to the the, the contract and the covenants that Yahweh Bashem Al Shah established with the nation of Israel, that has never changed. Okay, so the same the the covenant, the old covenant that was given to the Israelites in the in the in the wilderness. All right, then the, the covenants that was on uh, tablets of stone. All right, and it was solidified through blood. Okay, the, the, the New Testament or the new covenant that is going to be through Yahweh Shai. All right, that's still, that's still with Israel at the end of the day. But when you look at the old covenant and the law, you know, the cardinal ordinances of the law. All right, that was all symbolic of something else that was already established in the heavens. Okay, so... um. We can actually start at uh we can start at Hebrews nine, but there was another priesthood that came to mind before. It, um well yeah, we're gonna get that second. Um but yeah, let's actually let's start up at yeah, let's start up at he actually before that, I'm sorry. Can you grab Psalm one ten? The uh, the priest of the Melchizedek scripture, Psalm ten or one ten and uh verse four. Kind, kind, kind. I got it. You already got it? Kind. This is Psalms chapter one ten, verse four. It says, Yahweh hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Right. So the scripture says that the, I, the Lord Yahweh has sworn and he will not repent, meaning that he's not going to turn back from his word. He said, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek or Malak Tazadak. Mm -hmm. So there was already a priesthood established. There was a priesthood established before the Levitical priesthood came on the scene. Okay. And this priesthood that was established was a priesthood that was already established in the heavens. All right. That, ha that has, this, you know, there's a sanctuary up there. There's, in there's, there's incense being lit. You know, you have the, the, the ministers, the priests, which who are the ministers? The angels. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there's a high priest in the heavens, which you know who that is. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Shah himself, which is the mediator. All right. Between us, he's the liaison between us and the heavenly father, man. You see? Like no, go ahead. I was going to say, I like the way you put that, like, there was a priesthood that was established before, and of course, we, we know that, you know, through being able to uh, look at stories like uh, 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 Cain and Abel, you know what I'm saying, how they sacrificed, how they, at least they knew how to sacrifice, mm -hmm. one did it correctly, the other one incorrectly, but there was a priesthood that was established before the Levitical priesthood, which was in the heavens, you know, because mm -hmm. the scriptures say, let us make man in, uh, after our image, after our likeness. Right, right. So, yeah. The scripture says that uh, uh, the Lord has called us within heavenly, within heavenly, a uh, heavenly calling. Right. Moses saw that blueprint. You yes, we're going to get. Yeah. 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 No, like the priest said Moses seen the blueprint of something that was already established. Exactly. Before he was his, but before, you know, yeah. the priesthood of the sons of Aaron, you know. Yeah. So he's seen something that was already established in the heavens and, and the Lord was like, look, make make a tabernacle on the planet Earth. Right. According to what I've showed you in the heavens. Exactly. So Moses made a replica uh, to the best of his ability, according to the instructions that he was given mm -hmm. by the Heavenly Father on something that was already established. That's the key right. where we're saying right. is there was something already established going on before right. the tabernacle was already before the tabernacle was built. Right. Exactly. You know, so uh, let's go ahead and grab Hebrews, the ninth chapter. We're going to read verse one. All right, Hebrews 9 and 1, it says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service 
and a worldly sanctuary. Right. It says the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly, a worldly sanctuary. That word worldly in the Greek is cosmikos. Okay, which means an earthly. That's all that the word literally means is an earthly sanctuary. Okay, but even though an earthly sanctuary or an earthly tabernacle was built, it was established off of something that Moses seen. All right, so let's go ahead and grab uh, let's grab uh, Exodus the twenty fifth chapter, and you can start at verse one, and we're gonna read down to verse nine. Exodus twenty five and one, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering mm -hmm. of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. Ye shall take my offering, and this is the offering which ye shall take of them: mm -hmm. gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple. And scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair mm -hmm. and ram skin, dyed red and badger skin and shittim wood. Shittim wood, go ahead. Oil for the light, mm -hmm. spices or salaki spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense. Mm -hmm. Onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. Go ahead. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell amongst them. Right. So the Lord said, bring all, gather the children of Israel and gather an offering from them. Pretty much the offering was the, the, the necessary, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pretty much it was the, the materials, if you will, to make right. the tabernacle. Right. So he said, let and let and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So the key aspect of the sanctuary and the temple was the dwelling place of the heavenly father amongst us. Right. Right. A worldly dwelling that amongst us. Right. Now, we know through the spirit that we are the temple. So the Lord dwells within us. Exactly. You see, but the, the, the main the main reason for the temple was those sacrifices to be putting up so that, you know, the Lord had a dwelling place amongst the Israelites. Right. Uh, can you read verse nine as well? Kind of. uh, verse nine. According to all that I showed thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. And the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Right. He said, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. So it was a pattern. So it was a pattern of something that Moses has already got instructions or something that he already seen. Mm -hmm. You see? So this, we're, going, we're, we're, we're contrasting, like, like the lesson is, the contrast between the old and the new covenant. So it's a, it, right now we're looking at the establishment of the old covenant, the old tabernacle, the old ordinances, and how that contrasts with the new covenant and the new ordinances through the priesthood of Malak Tazadak, or the priesthood that Yahweh Shah has established. Right, which was already created in the heavens. Yep. Before Moses, I want to get a quick precept. Yep, yep, second, second Corinthians 5 and 1, it says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High. Woo! And house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. A good one. So Moses pretty much got the ingredients of how to build like a replica of that heavenly, you know, house, you know, just so we can have a place to, to make offerings and sacrifice to the most high on the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like and when you read that chapter, it talks about how when you read down it talks about the earnest of the spirit, mm -hmm. how the Lord gave us the earnest of the spirit, which is that the Holy Spirit endowed unto us. Right. Which is like a down payment of something before we get our upgrade. Right. You know, because there's an upgraded way in the heavens. But we're ultimately the temple, if I can just say, mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But that's just a way, just like he was given that instruction of, of a stimulus of what was in the heavens. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't actually represent the full embodiment of the temple. It's the right. people. Right. You know, it's all through the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. What scripture did you just read out? Second uh, Corinthians five and one. There's any more on that? No, nah, that's that's pretty much the point. I just want to hit that that, that was something established in the heavens, you know, before. Come you on. know. All right, so we can jump back to uh, Hebrews 9. Yep, uh, Hebrews 9 and uh, 2. It says, For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. Right, the sanctuary was the, was you had the holy place. All right, and the holy place consisted where you had the tabernacle, or excuse me, not the tabernacle. You had the you had the table mm -hmm. with the shoe bread and the candlestick. All right, this is within the this is within the sanctuary and within the temple. You had two parts, right? And this part would be where the where the priest, all right, the Levites would would minister. You know, they would go through their their task of of making sure that the sacrifices was done, making sure that the temple was upkept. 
You know, and you can read for your own time and for brothers that may be new. You can read about that in Numbers, the 18th chapter, where it it goes to the duties of the priest. Right. You know, Uh, go ahead. Uh, Yeah, the second part right here, verse three. And Mm -hmm. after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Right. So after the second veil, so you had the veil, Mm -hmm. which separated the holy place Mm -hmm. from the most holy place. Mm -hmm. Right. So there was a separation within the tabernacle. Right. There was a separation that was made, whereas you had the sanctuary, the sanctuary where the, where the, like I said, the candle would be lit. You would have the altar showbread. before the veil, right? The showbread, you know. But within, after behind the veil, mm-hmm. you would have where the ark of the covenant rested, where the ark of the, where the Lord would commune the cherubims, yep. exactly where the Lord would commune with us. Right, right. You know. Everybody couldn't go to the holiest of holiest. No, no, only the priest once yeah, exactly. a year. Exactly, yeah, exactly. The high priest only once yeah, a year. Yeah, that's <laughs> you second, know, so. that second veil, man. That's it. Yep. Let's grab. Uh, let's grab Exodus twenty six, and we'll start at verse. Uh, we'll start verse at, at verse thirty one and read to verse thirty five, and we're getting the, we're going back to the law, all right? Because you know this is important to know and understand mm-hmm. that when you read in the law in Exodus and Numbers and Leviticus about those different ordinances in the carnal way about it, and you get a spiritual understanding on now you understand, okay, what is what does the Ark of the Covenant represent? What did the candlestick represent? What did the shoe bear represent? What did the table represent? Right. What did the altar represent? You know, what are all these things? Because all these things were symbolic of something. Right, exactly. Already, you know? You got it. Uh, Exodus 26 and 1. Oh, uh, no, no, verse 31. So lucky. Are oh, you good? Oh, you want to read verse 31? <laughs> no, I saw it, good. Verse thirty one to thirty five. Because right now we're going to read about veil, we're going to read about the veil. Because mm-hmm. the veil was specific colors, mm-hmm. right? And I know Elder Ariala went into this in a, in a class a while a while ago. You know, so uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Exodus twenty six and thirty one. And now shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of cunning work. Mm-hmm. With cherubims shall it be made. Right. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood, overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. Mm-hmm. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tashes that thou mayst bring in thither within the veil, the Ark of the Testimony. So the Ark of the Testimony, with the Ark of the Covenant, mm-hmm. or the Ark of the Testimony would be within the veil. Right. Now, this veil was very important. This veil was symbolic of something. Right. It was a separation, right? Go ahead. And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. So it was a division between the holy place and the most holy. Now, remember, this veil was blue, purple, Mm -hmm. scarlet, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you think of blue, when you think of purple, when you think of scarlet, you can think of something. You think of the flesh. Right. Mm. Blood. You know, because the flesh, is this flesh is what separates us from accessing that most holy place. Right. But through Yahawashai... Right. We have that access right now through the spirit. Right. And we're going to be upgraded to be to to go into that most holy place, which is the heavens, which you're going to read here in a minute. Yeah. What's that account with a veil rent? Yeah. 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 What's that? Matthew uh, 27. Uh, mm-hmm. Matthew 2751. Yep. Yep. If you want to, I mean, if you want to read it for the brother, you can. Yeah, if you can uh-huh. find that, that that's just, I got just something good to add. Do you want me to continue on or you want me to read? He uh, read, read first. Read through verse 30, read, read through verse 35 and Exodus 26 and then we'll get the, uh, the, the veil being split. Okay, kind. This is back in verse 34, Hebrew or Salaki, Exodus 26 and 34. And now shall put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. And thou shalt set the table without the veil mm-hmm. and the candlestick over the table on the, on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. Mm-hmm. And thou shalt put the table on the north side. Right, so these are the instruments, and I was in on that. These are the instruments, right? The candlestick, the table. These will be outside the veil. Mm-hmm. You see, these things will be on, uh, in the holy place. But in the most holy, you had the ark of the covenant, right? You had that. Con, con. This is uh, and I had another precept afterwards. Con, yep. it's all good. Uh, so Matthew chapter twenty-seven, verse fifty-one. As a matter of fact, let me see, see something real quick. Matthew twenty-seven and uh, outside of verse. Verse 50, it says, Yahushua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. You know what I'm saying, talking about when he, you know, when he finally, when he finally died. Mm-hmm. And uh, it says, verse 20, 20, excuse me, Matthew 27 and 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. The veil of the temple was rent. It was tore. It was, it was, it was 
pretty much broken. It was mm-hmm. it was split in half. Right. Yeah. That was the first thing that, that happened. Separation, as as man. Mm-hmm. Between the spirit and the flesh, man. Mm-hmm. You know? That access was now made open. He was being upgraded, you know? Yeah. And that access has been made open for us now. Right. You know? Go ahead. Right, right. He was that access into the holiest of the holiest. Yeah. 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 That's right. It says, um, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Yep. And uh, when that happened, they knew that this man, this man was important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, you know what I'm saying? But prophecy had to be fulfilled, man. Right, 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 right. And you know, when, when Solomon was anointed king, you know, the same thing happened. That, that was an earthquake, and the earth, uh, part of the earth split. And that mm-hmm. shows that Yahweh Shah is the high priest, too, man. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because that way, yo, yo, he in the holiest of the holiest. You know, yeah, we, and we're gonna go through it. We're yeah, gonna yeah. go through it in this chapter. This is one of my favorite chapters. You had a precept, yeah. This is uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Mm-hmm. You know, going into how when that veil was rent, it symbolized the entering in of the of the whole of the access to the Heavenly Father, you know, basically without the without the use of the physical temple. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Through through Yahweh Shah now. He is that, you know, uh replacement for the sacrificial law, so on and so forth. Right. right. And that middle in that middle wall, that middle wall of partition being being cause that partition is a uh, division. Mm-hmm. So that middle wall of partition being broken was what? When you would when you go back into that time frame and that part of hit that part of antiquity, all right, you had the Gentiles and you had the Jews. You had the Jews and you had the Greeks. Okay, that's what this is where you get the understanding of there's uh there's no more Jew nor Greek mm-hmm. because that that way of those Israelites who fell into that Greekish fashion they couldn't access the temple they were looked at as profane and unclean right so that middle wall of division that division between the circumcision and the uncircumcision was broken now there's access for both parties to enter in into this holy place through Yahweh Shah kind kind you know um was there any more of that um that was a specific verse. Let me okay. see. Uh, let me double check and see if there's any more. So I can I look. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ephesians two and fourteen, verse fifteen. Um, it kind of goes into something else. Okay. Well, let's jump back to Hebrews chapter nine. We'll read verse four. Kind of. Hebrews nine and four, which had the golden censer. Mm-hmm. I'll just read three, just to kind of get the context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, mm-hmm. which had the golden censer. In the Ark of the Covenant, overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, mm-hmm. and Aaron's rod that budded, mm-hmm. and the tables of the covenant. Right, so within the veil, you had the Ark of the Covenant, and within the Ark of the Covenant, you had Aaron's pot, you had uh, uh, the, go- the, the, the golden pot with manna, mm-hmm. right, you had Aaron's rod that budded, and you had the tables, you had the tables of the covenant. Mm-hmm. And all three of those things, that, matter of fact, let's get some history, let's go ahead and grab... Exodus chapter 25. Um, I'm sorry, not Exodus 25. Uh, Exodus 16 and verse 33. You can read verse 32 and 33. Exodus 16. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to we gonna get the history on, on, mm-hmm. on these things. You know what I'm saying? Okay. This is Exodus chapter 16, verse 33. Start at verse 32. Exodus 16 and 32. And Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh commanded. Fill an omer of it. To be kept for your generations, mm-hmm. that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness mm-hmm. when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. Right. So this bread that he said, like, look, so now what you're going to do, you're going to take an omer full of this manna. Right. And you're going to put it in a pot and you're going to keep it as a you're going to keep it for your generations as a testimony that I fed you in the wilderness. Kind. Now, what did Yahweh Shah say? He said, I am that man that came down from heaven. Right. So inside of the Ark of the Covenant, you had this manna. Right. Right? Go ahead. It says in verse uh, 33, And Moses said to Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein Mm -hmm. and lay it up before Yahweh to to be kept for your generations. To be kept for your generations. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It says verse 34. Uh, That's it. That's Mm -hmm. like it. What verse did you start at? Verse 32 and I read verse 33. Exodus 16, 32 and verse 33. All right, so this explains. Do you know, uh, Kabash? Do you know what the the uh, the manna inside of the the tavern? Or excuse me. Do you know what the manna inside of the Ark of the Covenant represents? The manna. Hmm. Uh. 
Well, let me ask you this. What spiritually, what does the manna represent? The manna, this truth? Mm. The, the word, y'all. A little bit deeper. Okay. Because so, you, you answered the question in a sense, but there's a, there's another answer I'm looking for. Man. I was going to say, Yahweh said he is the bread. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yo, so Yahweh shall is, not live off bread alone, right. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Heavenly Father. Right. Mm -hmm. So that manna, like when you read in, what is it? First Corinthians 10 or Second Corinthians 10, mm -hmm. it says uh, Yahweh Shah is that rock that followed them in the wilderness. Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah. And, the, and what? That chariot was dropping manna mm -hmm. for 40 years consistently where we will be sustained with food. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, grab uh, Job 12. Job 12. And uh, the Job 12 and 20, 21. Or Job 12 and 23. Let me see real quick. Um, I'm sorry. Job 23 and 12. I had it backwards. Job 23 and 12. You can get it, Kabash. Job chapter 23 and 12. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Mm -hmm. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Right. So the so he said, I have esteemed, I have esteemed the words of his mouth. The word, right? The commandments, the word, which we know the word is who Yahweh shot. Right. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. So that manna coming down from heaven in the wilderness that was feeding us and sustaining us for those 40 years, consistently coming through in the clutch. Because right. as soon as we went to the land of Canaan, that's when the manna stopped. But to get us there, because it took a 40-year process, right. manna consistently came down day in and day out for us to be sustained and to eat right. physically. But we know, like Yahweh Shah said, he said, look, your fathers were fed with manna while that was in the, in the wilderness. But I am that man that came down from heaven. I am the true bread. I'm the everlasting bread. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that manna being in the Ark of the Covenant is, symbolic, is symbolically representing Yahweh Shai being the way when it comes to his word. That, 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 that path, right? Now, we also, mentioned, we also mentioned Aaron's rod. Let's grab Exodus. Uh, let's grab Numbers, excuse me, Numbers 17 and start at verse 1. Huh, and you can read verse 1 through verse 10. So, so just to confirm, they put the manna in the in the tabernacle of the Lord. Like they put the be. they put the manna inside of a pot, right? A golden pot inside of the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, they put it inside the Ark. <laughs> yes. Oh wow. The That's... Ark contained three things. It contained right. the manna. It contained Aaron's rod. And it contained the uh the 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 uh, the, the Ten Commandments. Mm. So that's we heavy. already know where we're going, right? Yeah, that's that's heavy. Right. So let's go ahead and get this history. Uh, number 17, you mm -hmm. said? Yep. Um, mm. You started at the top. Remember yeah, you, number, you verse 10. Number 17 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers, mm -hmm. of all their princes according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Right. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. Right. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. Right. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony. Before where, the testimony, they will be laid up. So all these 12 rods that, that you had, the house of their fathers, when you read Numbers uh, 1, I want to say it is, it gives you the name and a list of the fathers of each of the 12 tribes of Israel, the, the chief men. Mm -hmm. So each chief men of, of Judah all the way down to Issachar. They all they all gave their rods to Moses, they, their staffs. Right, right. And they was like, "Look, we're gonna lay it. Before, we're gonna lay it before the testimony." Right. Go ahead. Kind of, and it says, uh, verse five, and it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom, mm -hmm. and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, so, mm -hmm. whereby they murmur against you. Right. So the 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 the, the rod that the Lord chose at this point. Will blossom. It will blue. It will blossom with uh, flowers and almonds. Mm -hmm. Who the Lord chooses, this particular rod is going to blossom. Right. Go ahead. And Moses, Salaki, twenty six. Mm -hmm. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece, for each prince one, according to their fathers' houses, even twelve rods. And the rod of Aaron was among their rods. Mm -hmm. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass on that morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. Mm -hmm. And behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded. Right. So Aaron's rod blossomed mm -hmm. out of everybody else's rod of the 12 tribes of Israel. Aaron's of the tribe of Levi 
blossomed, mm-hmm. right? Go ahead. And brought forth buds and blossomed salak and bloomed blossoms and yielded almonds. And they yielded almonds. Now, for you brothers, do you know? Do you know specifically what's different between an almond tree versus any other fruit or any other tree that uh, other field? Almond tree. That's a good one. The almond tree is the first tree that blossoms and yields almonds after the winter. So it's the first tree that yields fruit after the winter. Mm-hmm. See, and you know, in the, in the wintertime, things die. Things yeah. die, yep. So the almond tree is the one, the first one that will, that will blossom and, and be fruitful, if you will. Right. Right? right. I know that. Yeah, that's what that's significant about almonds. Now, keep that in mind, though. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. What yeah. verse you want? Verse 9. Okay, you're going to read the verse 10. And Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel. And they looked and took every man his rod. Verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony mm-hmm. to be kept for a token against the rebels. And thou shalt a quiet and, and their shalt salak And thou shalt quiet to take away their murmurings from me that they die not. Right. So now Aaron's rod, Aaron's rod was to be kept as a testimony before. Yeah, that was to be kept as a testimony. All right. And to be put inside of the ark. Now, Kawan, what is the, what is what does Aaron's rod in the ark represent? Uh, what it represent Yahushua? What specifically about it, Yahushua? Mm. Let me ask you this: what What was key about Aaron's role? What was the key role of Aaron? Priestly duties. A little bit, a little bit deeper. It was uh, priestly duties, but what? Uh, it's a, in the that's the spirit. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear that. Are so, no, uh, you good? No, it's all good. Go ahead. The sacrifices. <clears throat> uh, a little bit deeper, but if you don't know, it's okay. Yeah, what about you, Shabal? What was the, you know? The key role of Aaron, all right, was that what through him and through his lineage, through his sons, the high priesthood was established. The high priesthood was established through Aaron, right? right. So Aaron's rod budded. Which signified with the Heavenly Father that, look, my, my priesthood is with this tribe, right? My priesthood is with this, with this tribe. But this rod of Aaron of the tribe of Levi went within the ark. What does the ark represent? Protection. Yahweh Shah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, the ark of the covenant. Yeah. Right. The ark of the covenant represents Yahweh Shah, right? Mm-hmm. So if the rod of Aaron went within the ark, that signifies what? Yahweh Shah's authority over the priesthood right right as we went through the manna is that the word right that, that sustained you was through your shy the priesthood is established through your shy the mercy seat the we mercy read that seat. in what, exodus 25 mm-hmm. yeah um what what was the range of verses that you just read brother mm-hmm. exodus uh number 17 verse 1 through 10 uh 17 okay. yeah i read 1 through 10 mm-hmm. okay cool right so that was aaron's rod being budded now the last thing it says what the tables of the the tablets of the covenant was within the ark as well so let's grab Exodus 25 or 16. Go back to Exodus 25. Because mm-hmm. when you read Exodus 25, it gives you the instructions of the tabernacle. It gives right. you and it gives you instructions of the Ark of the Covenant and how to make it. Right? Which is all a pattern at the end of the day that Moses seen in the heavens. Right? Go ahead. Exodus 25 and 16. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony. Which I shall give thee, mm-hmm. and thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. So within within the Ark of the Covenant, right, you had the mercy seat, or excuse me, within the Ark you had the tabernacle, or the tabernacle, yeah, the tablets. The tablets, yeah. Wow, what does that represent? The law. The law, right? The Ten Commandments mm-hmm. that Moses received on the mount. Went within the tab. I keep saying tabernacle. Went within the the ark of the covenant. Right. The laws is in. Right. He's the word. Mm-hmm. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So Yahweh inside of the ark of the covenant, you had the pot with manna, you had Aaron's rod that budded, and you had the tablets of the tablets of the covenant mm-hmm. within the ark, letting you know that Yahweh he is the food that sustains you. The priesthood goes through him, and he is the word. Of the Heavenly Father, mm-hmm. which was all already once again, this is a pattern. Moses was seeing a pattern in the heavens of something already going on. Something was already happening in the heavens, and Moses, the Heavenly Father, like, look, make this according to what you see. Mm-hmm. 
I'm gonna give you instructions. You've seen this. Now go make it on the planet Earth, a worldly sanctuary, mm-hmm. right? Of something that already taken place, of the old covenant, old covenant, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So it's now like level one, the first step to get to the next step, we had to go through the basic training. Yeah. So that you can be there's a but there's an upgraded way, right? Yeah. Now let's jump back to uh Hebrew unless anybody had anything else, let's jump back to Hebrews nine. Okay. And then we're gonna read verse five. I just thought it was interesting though. I was reading if I could just say yeah, Exodus absolutely. 25. Make, yeah, make it verse twenty one, it says, And thou shalt put the mercy seat. Man, bro, Bob, <laughs> shall hold it because <laughs> wait, no, no, read verse five <laughs> and then we're gonna jump back that kind of yeah, because yeah, I was like, Read Because yeah, 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 okay. we're gonna go back to Exodus twenty five here in a second. Okay, kind this yeah. is back in uh Hebrews 9 and 5, it says, and, um, and over it, the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Right. So now over over top, you had the, the cherubims that will be overlooking the mercy seat right. of the Ark of the Covenant. Right. It says who we, we can't now speak particularly because what? At this time, the Ark of the Covenant wasn't seen. Right. So now let's, let's jump to Exodus 25. And let's read verses uh, 17 to 21. Kind of, kind of. That's a bet. Mm-hmm. All right. Exodus 25 and 17. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. Mm-hmm. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work. Shall thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. Mm-hmm. And make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy sheet shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. Right. So this Ark of the Covenant will be born upon the shoulders of the priest. I'm going to say that slowly. The Ark of the Covenant was born upon the shoulders of the Levitical priest. Yeah. Yeah. Let you know that there was another way that was already higher than the Levitical priesthood. Right. The priest would bear the Ark of the Covenant holding it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Go ahead. In the cherub, verse 20, and the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, mm-hmm. covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat. Toward shall the, the fa- mercy seat. It's mm-hmm. like in my bed. Not yet. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. So the, the Ark of the Covenant had its whereas there was an angel on one side. And, yeah, there you go. The angel on one side, angel on the other. And the wings will be touching each other, and they will be facing one another, but their faces will be looking down at the mercy seat. So pretty much they will be looking down, both acknowledging this place where the 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 sacri- not necessarily sacrifice, but where the blood would be sprinkled for atonement. And the angels will be looking down on it, right? Now there's a precept I want to grab. Um, Can I get the word cherubim? Yeah, go ahead. In, in the Hebrew, um, it is Strong's H thirty-seven forty-two, Kar- uh, Karawab, Karawab. And when you get the uh, the Chaldee lexicon, it says a, a cherub in the theology of the Hebrews, a being of a sublime and celestial nature mm. in figure, a compounded of that of a man, an ox, a lion and an eagle. Mm. Three animals. Ezekiel. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. It says uh, three, three animals, which together with a man symbolize power and wisdom. Uh, it says they are sp- they are first spoken of as guarding paradise, afterwards as bearing the throne of the Most High upon their wings through the clouds, um, and then it, and then it quotes uh, Psalms eighteen and eleven. You know, matter of fact, let me get that real quick because uh, of course the reason why they were cherubims versus anything else is. Because they, you know, represent, again, wisdom and power. But let me get uh, Psalms 18 and 11 to see what it says real quick, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. It says Psalms 18 and 11. And of course, this is the Psalm of David. Um, you see here. Okay, verse verse 10. It says, and he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yeah, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. So cherubim, cher- cherubim are spiritual beings. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Angels. Angels. Mm-hmm. There, there's a scripture, uh, I think it's in John or something, that, that describes what, what Moses saw. Like, not what Mo, I don't know if, yeah, what Moses saw. No, what, uh, yeah, what Moses saw is uh, describing that the uh, angels were before the Heavenly Father's face and they was uh, blocking it off. 
You know what I'm talking about? You know what scripture I'm talking about? Um, you, you're talking about in Exodus where the uh, Lord said he's going to show, show Exodus that Moses is back? Mm, no, nah, it's it's somewhere. Or are you talking about in, in Ezekiel, the first chapter where it described the, the angels that Ezekiel saw? That might be it. Yeah. You might be talking about Ezekiel, first chapter. It might be it. Yeah, see if you can find it. Can you grab that real quick in John 20 and 11 as well? Because yep. check this out. Yeah, now, this is after Yahweh Shah arose from, arose from the dead. Yeah, St. John 20 and 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And see of two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Yahweh Shah had lain. So the, where the body where Yahweh Shah had lain in the sepulcher, right? Where his body was laying on this, on this platform, if you will, mm -hmm. inside the tomb, you had an angel that was sitting at the head and one that was sitting at the feet, right? Sitting there, yeah. Letting you know that the Ark of the Covenant is who? It's your house. Right? It's your house. Right. And and what would happen in oh, the time of atonement? Man. The blood would be sprinkled upon the mercy seat, but between the cherubims. That's crazy. You see that? Mm -hmm. Between the cherubims. Between the and, cherubims. And he laid his life down. He laid his life down, and he was, and, and the angels, and the angels, one was sitting on both sides when when she went to the tent. So he's the ark. He's the ark. Ultimate sacrifice. He's the ultimate sacrifice. The ark is a, is some is a, is a gap between two things. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So he was that way. Mm -hmm. You know, through his death, it showed that that way was opened up. That door. That door was open. You know. So um, let's jump back to Hebrews nine and read verse five again. Yeah, can I read 21 real quick? Oh, it's locked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah, could you make that point about the gap one more time? Well, an ark, like, you, like for example, you know you have the ark of uh, St. Louis. Mm -hmm. well, ark of, I, I, well, I never heard Well, it's, it's, a, it's a landmark. Mm -hmm. It's a landmark. But with the ark of St. Louis, it's a bridge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they call it the ark. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, if you pull up, if you pull up a picture of it, you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, the ark of uh, St. Louis. It's a, it's a, uh, right here. yeah, yeah, that, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. And what is it? It's, it's a bridge mm -hmm. that leads you from one place to another. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So with this, with the Ark of the Covenant, it's a bridge, right. Or a way that lets you get from one place to another. So Yahweh Shai representing the Ark of the Covenant that, that, you know, the, the glory where the Lord will commune. Right. Because the scriptures talk about numbers. It says that what? A cloud, I, will, I will commune with you from between the cherubim. Right. That's what he specifically told Moses. And we know the word of, the word is, is Yahweh Shai. Okay. So he is that He is our liaison between the Heavenly Father mm -hmm. and, and, uh, uh, and us. us. Right. And that's why the scripture says that what? Yahweh Shai, our advocate. When an advocate is like a lawyer. Right. That 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 advocates for us to, mm. to talk to the judge in our behalf. Right. He, he pleading your cause. Yeah. To my uh, First John chapter two. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the my little children. Only way to have look at us through it, son. That's the only way that he going mm. That's the only way he gonna commune with us right now. Yeah. Right. So he basically is the access, like we was going into earlier. That's why I want to read Exodus twenty five and twenty one. Yep. Yeah, you got it. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. That's it. So Yahweh Shah, he's access to the mercy seat. Right. You know, him being the ark. Mm -hmm. He's access. To, he, within him is the testimony of the Heavenly Father. Right. That's why the scripture says in John, 1 John 5, it says what, uh, 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 I'll just read it real quick. Because it, it actually just came to my mind. This is 1 John 5. And uh, I want to say it's verse. Here you go. This is 1 John chapter 5, verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of the Most High is greater. For this is the witness of the Most High, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of the Most High hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not the Most High hath made him a liar, because he, because he believeth not the record that the Most High gave of his Son. Right. You see, so the, the the heavenly Father gave a record and a testimony of his own son, of his only begotten Son. Right. He said, "This is my Son, in whom I of whom I uh, of whom I begotten. Hear ye him." Right. When he got baptized, the the Lord literally came on the scene. Like, look, the, he's the he's the man to listen to. Right. That was a witness and a record of the heavenly Father. Like, look, I'm I'm telling y'all what y'all need to do. If you seen me, you seen the Father. Right. He was the way. He was right. the access. Right. I'm coming in my Father's mind. Right. He's the complete mind of the Most High. That's it. Pretty much. Yep. The uh, the, the shadow of the uh, the uh, the brightness of his light. Right. 
So you got the sun, but you see the brightness of the sun. The sun ain't like right in front of us is bl- bl- gleaming, but you see the rays of the sun, mm-hmm. right? That gives light. It's, that's your Habasha. Not saying that the heavenly father is the sun, but you know I'm just making yeah. a comparison, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, back in Hebrews yeah. 9. Yeah, back in Hebrews 9 mm-hmm. and, uh, and 6, it says, Now when these things were thus or ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of the Most High. Like I mentioned in uh, Numbers 18. You can read that on your own time. Go ahead. But in the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. Now, for uh, Shapal, what, what is that? So like, can you read it again, bro? Go ahead. Uh, Hebrews 9 and 6. The reverse says Verse 7. So like mm-hmm. it, but, in, good. but into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. It's talking about um, David Turner. Beautiful. And Go I'm ahead and this pre- precept in uh, 1 John 2 real quick. Hold yep, give, you can get 1 John. I want you to grab, Baba Kishah, if you can grab uh, Leviticus 16. Start at verse 29 and you'll read through verse 34. Let me read this real quick. 1 yes, John absolutely. 2 and 1, it says, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate yep. with the Father, Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach, the righteous. You get that word advocate? Yeah, kind of got you. Okay. And it says, and he is the propitiation. And when you go into that word, that means atonement. Beautiful. It says, and he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. <laughs> the whole, yeah, you got it. Not including his own sins too. Right. You know, because that's what the priest would do. He would make a sacrifice for himself and then also for the nation. Right. Right. That's right. Propitiation, he was the atonement. Right. No, his blood. By blood, t- yeah. By blood, because yeah. what, what, what's, what made, what, what uh, Kabash, what made the contract between Israel and the Heavenly Father solidified? The blood, the sprinkling, the sprinkling of the blood. Yeah, the blood yeah. Right. So the blood of Yahweh Shah signifies the contract of an upgraded way. Right. Mm-hmm. Starting with the elect, his blood being shed solidified a new way. <clears throat> right. Like no, nah, it's gonna be not no, but look, it was already written. Well, it was already spoken of of old because what. When we read the New Testament or the New Covenant, Hebrews 8 and John 31, or excuse me, uh, Jeremiah 31, mm-hmm. what? Moses already seen a pattern of something already happening. Exactly. He already seen a new way. He already seen a way that was not even of this world. But he, he it was a carnal ordinance. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got that Leviticus? Come, come. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 16 and verse 29. And this shall be a statute for, forever unto you. That in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. Mm-hmm. Pretty much you're going fast. Go ahead. Right. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Right, the priest. Now, this wasn't just no regular just priest that would be doing this. This would be the high priest that would, that would do this. Once a year, he would go and he'd like, and when you read in the scriptures, the Lord specifically told Moses, tell Aaron, like only once a year you can go in here because if you try to go in the if you try to go into the the holiest of all, just anytime you want to, the Lord will kill you because you just can't just walk up in there. Right. It was yeah. a particular only on this day, go in here and do this. Right. Go ahead. It says, "It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever, mm-hmm. and the priests whom ye shall anoint." Whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead, mm-hmm. shall make the atonement, and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. Keep this in mind. Moses was getting these instructions. That that, yeah. Of something. He was getting these instructions of these carnal of this way to do this. Mm-hmm. But Moses word. seen something already uh, happening. Yep. Right? So the Lord like, look, do this on earth. Right. Right? Go ahead. Verse 33. He shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation, mm-hmm. and for the altar, and he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation. All right, he will make an atonement for everybody. Mm-hmm. Right? What verse you uh, Last verse. Okay, okay, you got it. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord Moses or, or the Lord commanded Moses. And that also proved that also proves that Yahweh didn't did, just didn't shed his blood for everybody. 
Yeah. Especially if your Howard Shy was if if your Howard Shy is the ark. He's the he's the carnal he's the spiritual representation of these carnal ordinances. The carnal ordinances was only for Israel. Right. Right. And no other nation. So that proves and shows you that Yahweh Shai's sacrifice wasn't just for that didn't go to all nations. Nope. And every and every uh, you know the other eighteen nations. No, that went straight. It's, it's only for Israel still. Yeah. It's, but it's an upgraded way for us. You got to it also prove that in Matthew five, so the law not done away with. Right. This was this is a permanent thing. Yeah. So it means these people in the Bible still exist. You still got to hold up the Yeah. That's crazy. That Deuteronomy seven and six. Yeah. Yeah. Chosen people above all people. You know, uh, that was it on that. Uh, let's jump back to Hebrews nine. You read first. I'm sorry. Yeah, you got that word advocate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is. Uh, Are you good? Let me see. Oh wait, I thought I had. Oh, I got first. John. It's like it. This is uh, First John, chapter two. Oh, I already had it this time. First John chapter two. Uh, the word is Strong's G. Actually, I'm gonna play it right here. Parakletos. There we go. Parakletos. Yeah. Strong G 38, 75, Parakletos. And it says, uh, Comforter is, is used five times. Four times it's used Comforter. The other time it's translated into Advocate. Comforter. Yep. Um, it says, One who pleads another's cause with one. Right. Who pleads the cause of Israel. Right. Our sins. Mm -hmm. The heavenly, how is Shah does that? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, an intercessor, uh, let me see here, of Mashiach in his exaltation at the Most High's right hand, pleading with the Most High, the Father, for the pardon of our sins. He's our defense attorney. Mm -hmm. right. He's our defense. He's our defense attorney in in the heavens, though. Right. We literally Yahweh Shah literally is in the heavens as we speak right now, pleading right. our cause. Right. Now, in the carnal ordinances, you would have the high priest going to the holies of holies. Where he would commune through us through the mercy seat, right? And we had to sprinkle the blood and do all these things in the temple, in the tabernacle. Yahweh Shai is doing this on a spiritual level in the heavens, in the in in the, in the spirit, in a whole other dimension. He's doing this in the face of Yahweh, like directly, directly, because Moses and, and the high priest wasn't talking directly to Yahweh. They were speaking to Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was still there, being that liaison between us. But Yahweh Shai is literally. Directly in front of the father, like face to face with him, letting him know. Mm -hmm. You know, I found that. Uh, I found that scripture I was talking about. It was uh, the oh, yeah. of Isaiah six, the chapter the Isaiah six chapter. It tells you about uh, those two angels before the face of the heavenly father with six wings. Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, the uh, the, uh, the seraphim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it shows you like everybody just don't get to see the heavenly father. Like that. Yeah, and then the angels were uh, specifically they, they took coals off the altar and cleansed the mouth of Isaiah. Yep, and and purified it. I'm just get uh, straight. Uh, well, we can start at the top. Isaiah six and one. And in the year that King o Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the, the temple, which is I believe that's uh it was broken down as that being his garment. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, above it is stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. So those, so both of those angels is, is before the Heavenly Father, and so those got to be some big, some big wings, you know, to cover mm -hmm. the Most High's face and his feet. Mm -hmm. It's basically covering his features. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. And one and one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Uh we can keep reading, but that was pretty much the point of verse two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well the angels cover is the wings covering uh the uh the angels' face and the angels feet. Yeah, I think that's covering uh, their own face. Oh yeah. no, it's all good, it's okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But but even with that, you know what I'm saying, there's ministers in the right. heavens. Yeah. <laughs> the angels, hey, the scripture says, that are not the angels ministers of, of fire? They're, they're servants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had ministers of the sanctuary on the planet Earth, so you got ministers in the heavens. All right. Hey, even after I believe what's that in uh, Saint? No, it's not James four chapter, but I know when Yahweh was tempted in the wilderness. Matthew four. Matthew yeah. four. He came minister. Yeah, minister, don't yeah, 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 yeah. Just came yeah. minister unto. And when you read Numbers eighteen, the Levit the Levites ministered unto Aaron. 
Right. Mm. And 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 his sons, which under under Aaron and his sons was who the high priest, the high priesthood, and you had the Levites that would minister unto Aaron. Right. Okay. Like I said, I'm not. That's a long chapter, but you can read that on your own time. Read Numbers 18. Um, but let's go jump back to uh, Hebrews nine. Unless anybody else said anything. Kind. Of, this is back in uh, Hebrews nine and eight. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Right. So the Holy Spirit, the Spirit was already signifying with this veil being created. The Heavenly Father, like, look, make this veil. Showing you that there's not that, that the way to the holiest of all wasn't made. It wasn't going to. It just wasn't. It's access there. Yeah, it right. Open. It just wasn't free. Like the elder said, it was just freely opened. Nah. But what did Yahweh shall say? John fourteen and six. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but through me. Right. I'm the only way that you can get to the Father, and the Father dwells in the holiest of all. Right. So Yahweh shall like look. I'm that way. Right. Even they said, look, let us enter, let us uh, enter it boldly. Uh, what's that? Hebrews? Throne of Grace? Yeah. Uh, Hebrews uh, 4 or four. something like that? Yeah, yeah, 4. There's another one I'm thinking 4 and 16 or something like that. Oh, yeah, Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 and 19 and 20. If somebody can grab that real quick. 19 and 20. 19 I got you. One. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 and 20. Whoever got 10. it. Hebrews 10 and verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest Ooh. by the blood of Yahweh Shai. Right, the holiest by the blood of Yahweh Shai. We got the boldness now to enter into this act. We have this access, right? right? This upgrade. This upgraded way. Right, go ahead. Verse 20. By a new and living way mm -hmm. which he has consecrated for us mm -hmm. through the veil that is to save his flesh. Through the veil that is to save his, his flesh. flesh. Yep. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that veil was symbolic of Yahweh Shai's flesh. Right. And what had to be what had to happen to Yahweh Shah's flesh for that access to be open? Blood, blood had to be shed. That's why it's talk about the scarlet. Yeah, the scarlet, the purple, purple the blue. The blue, yeah. You know what I mean? It was all symbolic. It was a, it was all symbolic. Right. You know what I mean? Um let's uh continue. And that uh was there any more of that? Okay. Let's jump back to Hebrews chapter nine. Yeah, Hebrews nine and uh nine. Which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Right. It was a figure. All right. That word figure in the Greek is parabo uh, parabole. Well, parable. Wow. Parabolic. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Which means a thing serving as a figure of something else. A symbol. So this, this, this worldly tabernacle was a figure or a symbol of something Showing forth of something else, right? That was already happening. Exactly. But it says the conscience, right? And that word conscience is sunai desis. It says so to the perfect, so to perfect one, that his own conscience is satisfied, that he can regard himself free from guilt. Because think about it. As a high priest, right? Or if you commit a sin and you do a sacrifice, that doesn't necessarily purge your mind of what you did, because yeah, you, you still got that guilt. Did. Yeah. And you got that guilt in your mind, like, man, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I did this. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's why what? The, 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 the Day of Atonement doesn't, it wasn't just one Day of Atonement and that was it. Right. It was a yearly thing where the Day of Atonement had to constantly happen because we would constantly go off and the priests had to constantly go in yearly to atone for the sins of the nation of Israel consistently. Year in and year out. Yahweh Shai had to only do that once. Whereas, after that one time that he did it, now this cleansing and this purging is internal. It's inside of us now, right? Let's grab uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 21. If somebody holds Hebrews 7, verse 18 and 19. All right, we're all, we're all uh, Galatians chapter 3, you said verse 21. Mm -hmm. All right, this is Galatians 3, 7, 21. And 19. It says... Is the law then against the promises of the Most High? All right, so is the law of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua against the promises that the, that the Heavenly Father made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The covenants, those, those promises that he made? Right, go ahead. The Most High forbid. Meaning no. Right, go ahead. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, right. verily righteousness should have been by the law. Right, so righteousness would have been by the law if the law would have given you life to be free from the, the guilt of your conscience. Mm-hmm. You see, because we still follow the laws that is the commandments to the best of our ability, but we still got the guilt that we deal with whenever we go off. Mm -hmm. 
right? That's what the law, the law literally is there to show us what to do and what not to do. So right. when you read particular parts of the law, you get cut because you know that you're not doing it, mm-hmm. right? So you have that guilty conscience, right. right? But if the law was created to make you, to give you eternal life, which ultimately it being inside of us is going to give, give us eternal life, but in this flesh, in this way of this pattern of the world, like the, like the, like the priest read in Second Corinthians 5, that worldly tabernacle, but if you have a tabernacle in the heavens waiting for you, it's another way that's already being established, right? Uh, Hebrews 7. Okay. Hebrews 7 and 18 and 19, it says, For there is verily a disannulment of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. There is a disannulment or ab- uh, abolition, right? A, a, a destroying of the, of the uh, read that again. For there is verily a disannulment of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Right, and that commandment goes into that. That commandment is the Mosaic precept concerning the, the priesthood. Because people, Christians will read that and think, oh, yeah, see, there's a, there's a destroying of the law, such as the commandments. When, when you get that word commandment in the Greek, it's going into the priesthood. There's, a, there's an abolition of the, 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 precept, the precepts concerning the Levitical priesthood of the way, because there was another priesthood already established. Right? Read that. Uh, read it one more time and then read through verse 19. So like, yeah. Now we have an understanding. Okay. Hebrews 7 and 18 and 19. It says, For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. The weakness and the unprofitableness. Uh, the, the weakness and the unprofitableness thereof. That weakness and unprofitableness was that guilty conscience. Because even the high priest keeping those uh, precepts of going into the holiest of all. Doing the Day of Atonement, did those high priests live forever? Nope. They died. They still died, and then their sons would have to reign and, and continue, and to the point where as it just stopped, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't live forever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They still, they still sinned. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So the, there was still weakness and unprofitableness within this Levitical way, right? Go ahead. And also, I mean, Jake was rejecting it then, because this is all I mean to reject as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So they thought it was weak and it didn't mean anything. They, that's, that's, right, when there's a whole other meaning behind it. Yeah. You know? Right. Verse 19 For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. Right, the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. And that bringing in of a better hope is the bringing in of an upgraded way, which is through Yahweh Shai, the priesthood after the order, the priest after the order of Melchizedek. That upgraded way, whereas now, okay, instead of following the laws such as the commandments written on stone, I'm going to put the laws in you. I'm going to upgrade you in this way so that now you can actually be face-to-face with the Heavenly Father, just like I'm face-to-face with the Heavenly Father now. Right. Yeah. You see? But, uh, Hebrews 8 established upon better promises. Right. Yeah. Right. What was that point you made for a commandment there? When you say Christians. We'll be able to say. go to the holiest of holiest through that blood of Yahweh Shah. Mm-hmm. And that commandment, that commandment there is not a disannulling of the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord. That commandment is the is the is the pre, is the mosaic, the uh, the pre the priesthood, or the precepts is in the excuse me, the precepts and the ordinance concerning the Levitical priesthood. Right, right. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Was that in on the verse? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read it again. Verse nineteen. Yeah, you guys. It says, "For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did." By the which we draw nigh unto the Most High. Right. By the which we draw nigh to the Most High through Yahweh Shai. Now we draw nigh because what? It's a it's a mental cleansing. Now it's an internal cleansing that's taking place. Right. Now we're 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 we're, we're being cleansed to be groomed to be before to go before the Lord through Yahweh Shai. Now there's an upgraded way being established. Now that we don't that, that access that was once closed is now being opened, right? To get into a higher glory, right? Uh, what's the about Hebrews 9? Yep, uh, Hebrews 9 and 10. It says, Which stood only in meats and drinks, in divers washings, and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of Reformation. Right, until the time of Reformation, until, until the time of Yahweh Shai. Right? And there's, you know, you had the, the priest that would do divers washings, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You have to do go through these particular ordinances, yep. you know what I'm saying? Different cleansing rituals and things of that nature. Oh, yeah. You know? Which is all a pattern of something that was already established. Right. Right? Go ahead. But Hamashiach 
being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle uh -huh. not made with hands that is to say not of this building right and that not of this building is not of the order of of the, uh, not of the order of of what you see right this building is it's not it's, it's it's of a building of not of this not of this order of what you're saying but it's of a higher upgraded order right that's why when you read Ephesians the first chapter it talks about how the Lord has predestinated spirits who have been who are going to be conformed to the image of his son the elect these particular key spirits with the heavenly father dealing with that are going to have that access back to the heavenly father through his only begotten son those first those first fruit spirits right those those spirits who are after the order of Melchizedek after this priesthood that's why the lord said what i will make you a, a nation and a kingdom of priests right he the lord said that yep. you know go ahead it says neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us right now what is what for uh what is that what is that holy place Can you read it one more time go ahead uh, this is Hebrews 9 and 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. What is it? What is that holy place talking about? Because we, we mentioned a holy place earlier, earlier in the chapter that there was a holy place mentioned within the tabernacle. You had the holiest. You had the holy place, but you had the holy of all the holiest of holy. sanctuary and then the holiest. Yeah, the holiest mm -hmm. of holy. So what is this holy place talking about in verse 12? I would say uh, before the throne of the Most High. And it's the heavens. The heavens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like before the throne. He, he, he entered into, this, like, Yahweh Shai. Oh, Acts 1. He, when he, he before Acts 1. superseded. Revelation 5. Yeah, Revelation 5. You know, like, yeah. what, and, through, and, and through him being in this holy place, he's handed out gifts to men. Mm -hmm. But... Instead of going into the into the temple and going within the veil, right? He superseded that and he was he bypassed that and went, now he's in the heavens after the order of Melchizedek. After right. the order of Melchizedek in a sanctuary not made with hands that was already established from the beginning, he's mm -hmm. there. Yeah, right. Made. He's in a whole another upgraded level. Yeah, right. I got Go ahead, real quick. You got it, real quick. Uh, Acts seven forty eight. How be it? Most high dwell not in temples made with hands. Boom. That's it. The that's it. Yeah, so the Lord don't dwell in temples that's made with hands and tabernacles made with the with the hands of men. He, that's not where the Lord dwells, right? Now we were to do these things as a as a symbolic way. That's why that's why the Lord told David, like, look, you're not going to build my tabernacle, but your son is going to build my uh, a temple for me, right? Which was Solomon. What you know, who Solomon is. Yeah, I was shy, right? Go ahead. Verse in Hebrew, back in Hebrews 9. Yeah, verse 13, it says, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Right, so if you had these, if you had the blood of bulls and goats and, you know, and, 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 the, and the, the ashes of a heifer, with the ashes of a heifer, if you read, what is it, num Numbers 13, I think, you know, if you would, you would take a red heifer, you would go outside the city, burn it, and then you would put like hyssop, cedar wood, and scarlet within the burning heifer, and the ashes of it, you will mix it with water. If, if somebody touched a dead body, you would sprinkle it upon you, it would be clean, right? So if the blood of bulls and goats and the, and the ashes of, of animals cleanse you in this carnal way, right? It sanctifies you and it cleanses you, separates you, right? Go ahead. How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach? Right, so how much more is the blood of Yahawashiach? Right, so if these carnal ordinances cleansed you in a, in a carnal sense, in a Levitical sense, how much more is the blood of this order of this priest of a higher order going to cleanse you? Because that Levitical cleansing cleansed you outwardly; it didn't pur it didn't purge your conscience. Nope. Now the blood of Yahweh shine through His cleansing is going to purge you internally inside, which is going to give you that confidence. It's going to it's going to give you that confidence to access this higher order. This higher way, right? So you can read verse nine, to, for, verse fourteen again. Yep, it says, "How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to the Most High, 
purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power. All right, so he's going to purge you from dead works, that old dead way that we were once living, you know, being in the congregation of the dead at once. What do you think happened whenever you woke up? That was an internal cleansing of your mind. Mm -hmm. Our minds are being cleansed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That that's an internal right. washing. Right. That was an internal sprinkling of of the, the the water of the blood of the heifer, the blood of the goats. That was and now it's internal because now it's a spiritual cleansing. Whereas back then it was just ritualistic. You see, um, as the scriptures say, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to the word. By taking by taking that heed is. according to the word. By taking heed according to the word, man. And what's ended off on Hebrews 8, verse 1 to 3? And what ended off? Kind of, kind of, uh, was that all you wanted to read? Yeah, the bro. All right. Uh, yeah, we can read verse 15. Okay. Hebrews uh, 9 and 15. Because now this is going to the sacrifice of Yahweh Shah, how this establishes the new covenant. Yeah. Because what I want to do is contrast between the old and the new and show a contrast of, w of what it all symbolically represented, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You can read verse 15. Kind. It says, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, mm -hmm. they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. They which are called, right? Going back to Ephesians 1, right? Those who are called might receive the promise of eternal, of the uh, eternal inheritance. You're going to be joint heirs, right? So with... As we read it again, for this cause, he is the mediator or the advocate of the new covenant, the new testament, the new way, right? That by means of death, his blood being shed for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, which we all transgress and we all under the first testament, we put to death. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Those who are called to that is that priesthood from the, from the heavens, man. His brothers, you know, that that. That that first fruit body, if you will. That no guile. That no guile power, right. Mm -hmm. And uh we we can end it off on Hebrews eight. That shows you that not everybody's gonna be saved, it says they which are called. Right. Those <laughs> which are called. But it also if I can land back, I mean, it also says under the first testament. The transgressions that were under the first testament. Israelites. It doesn't even you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. yeah, bro, that's that right there says it all. As far as that goes. Mm -hmm. you know. Yep. And we can end it off with Hebrews 8, verses 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 1. Now these things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Mm -hmm. A minister of the sanctuary. A minister of the sanctuary. Right. And of the true tabernacle. And of the true tabernacle in the heavens. So he's a minister, servant of the sanctuary in the in the true tabernacle that's established in the heavens already, right? Go ahead. Which Yahweh Shai pitched and not man. Right, which the Lord pitched and not man. So that what, what the Lord pitched is already something established, but what man pitched is something that the Lord showed man right. to build something on a replica of something that was already going on. Mm -hmm. You see? So any other brothers have any precepts? That was all I had. That's all I had as well. Kind of. Hey, so with that, hey, Lord willing, this class was edifying to the elect, man. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, We'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us his truth. And much peace, love, and salutation to the elect. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.